So I've asked in our Team iFlight group about the biggest beginner mistakes starting out with FPV drones. And there were a lot of useful answers. I used some of those and mixed them together with my personal favorites from the support channel. So for all the beginners, watch that video. Oh, that had to be the first one on the list. And I think we can all agree on FPV drones. It has a steep learning curve. It's totally manual, you can't even get off your goggles, your drone doesn't wait for you in the air, you feel like an aerospace engineer opening up Betaflight Configurator the first time. I even had to learn how to solder and I'm not even scratching the surface, so do your research before you get into FPV drones. Oh, yeah. FPV drones don't work like a Mavic, it's not a DJI. You don't lift off and then see what it does and learn how to fly. You will crash and in worst case hurt yourself. There are loads of different simulators to practice on your computer. You could basically buy a radio transmitter first and fly on your computer screen while you're waiting for the drone to arrive. I know, this is something we get all used to. Windows update pops up and you know it's just getting better, let's say, most of the time. With FPV drones, it's a little different. Since Betaflight, the most common software for flight controllers, is an open source firmware, every setting needs to be adjusted to your specific build. Flashing a wrong version could potentially break your hardware, or wrong settings could lead to problems flying it. So please don't mess around with firmware, as long as you are not sure what you're doing. This is a very common problem that we get reported all the time. People throw their new BNF without propellers on the table, connect the battery and arm. The motors start to spin and the resulting vibration makes the flight controller believe it needs to correct its position. And, but since there is no propeller thrust, the flight controller would just increase your throttle further to compensate. In short, it's totally normal and unnecessary. The only reason you would want to spin up your motors is to test the motor direction. Motors are set up to spin in different directions. On a foam motor or so-called quad configuration, each diagonal motor pair would spin in the same direction, either left or right. In a set of propellers, you also get right and left ones. If you put them on the wrong way, it would just suck itself into the ground. If it's completely messed up, it even flips. One side note, don't over tighten propeller nuts. Make sure they are tight, but don't overdo it. Damaging the propeller hub, which could lead to exploding propellers. Rule of thumb, LiPo batteries can be charged up to 4.2 volts per cell. That's considered to be full. The nominal voltage on most labels would say 3.7 volts. That's the average voltage your battery outputs. Our minimum voltage would be 3.5 volts. Discharging below 3 volts would be considered damaging. Batteries under high load or high throttle tend to sack or drop the voltage. Especially old or bad batteries do that. <laughs> Always balance charge to 4.2 volts per cell, fly about 90% of its capacity, land above 3.5 volts, and never store batteries empty or fully charged, which is even worse. In most cases, you might just have a failsafe, which is the automatic drop of your drone in case of a signal loss to your radio. On analog goggles on your RSD, you'd read RX loss fat on your screen. On the DJI OSD, you won't get this message, sadly. Either you went out too far or behind something blocking your signal. It could also be interference. There's one way to fix that to upgrade your RC link with Express LRS or Crossfire, which are both known to be very stable and have a lot of range. 
A big disappointing fact I also had to learn at the beginning was that we have to be in LOS or line of sight to our drone for best signal. We talk about penetration when, for example, the signal can travel behind trees or through a building. But if you are not flying line of sight, which means your antenna facing at your drone without objects in between, you might lose signal quickly. If you just go slightly behind a mountain ridge 5 kilometers away, it instantly turns dark in your goggles. Every time I go to a new spot or with new gear, I would check out the reception first. Check how far I can go and then have fun. Oh, FPV drones don't work like a DJI drone. It won't just come back when you lose signal, even you carry a GPS unit. Betaflight offers a feature called GPS Rescue, which gets either activated with a switch on your radio, perfect for testing and in case of a video loss, or defensive procedure instead of a drop. In case of a radio loss, your drone would automatically turn around and fly straight back to the liftoff location. It won't land by itself, so you have to take over as soon as you regain radio control. Nobody likes to say, I'm a beginner, I get it, but flying a high performance 6S 5 inch quad or a 2.5 inch, whoop, when you just finished learning on the simulator makes a huge difference. You do not only put yourself in danger, but it's also going to be more expensive crashing a 5 inch than a smaller, lighter, ducted quad, like a whoop for example. And this is already the end of my video. I hope you liked it. Leave me a subscribe or a like if you really enjoyed watching it or learned something today. And uh, leave me some comments. What do you think about your personal experiences beginning with a drone and your early mistakes? See you next time.